everyone, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be making a time lock door in Roblox Studio. So let's get started by making a door. Okay, so after you have your door, you're going to put in another part inside the door. And this will act as a place to put your screen message thing to say how much time you have left. So I'm going to scale this down. Move it over to just about here. Okay. Now you can position this where you want the text to be. So around here is fine. Scale it like that. Like that. I'm gonna set the anchor to true. Transparency to one. This one, the door, also anchored. Okay, now inside here I'm gonna add a surface GUI so I can put my text on it. Uh, it's going to be through the front. Let's see. To adjust the faces till I get it on the right face. You change back. There it is. So you can see our text is here. So to make our text label scale up to the entire part size, I'm going to set the size to 1010 zero, one, zero, separated by commas. Scale that like that. Okay, we have our text here. I'm going to scale up my text and just put some placeholder text like... Um, so there's our placeholder text. Now I'm going to make the script that will actually make this work. So this is going to be a local script inside replicated first. I'm going to call this the Tom Lock Door script. Like that. Whoops. Okay, now I'm going to make a bunch of setting variables here. So I'm just going to make a setting section. A few variables. First is the doors. This will be a table of the doors inside the workspace. So you're going to surround this by the curly brackets to make it a table, which is a collection of objects. So I'm going to wait for child and I have my door here. So I'm just going to type in door with my comma. So what this will do is it'll wait for the door to load because anything in replicated first loads first thing. So sometimes if you write code that references stuff inside workspace, um, sometimes the object doesn't load before you reference it, so my error. So that's why I'm going to wait for child. And this variable makes it so that you can have multiple doors that all have this time lock on it, and you can just control it through one script. You don't need to make like four or five for each door. Next variable will be the UI part. And this will just be the name of the part that holds the surface GUI. So I'm just going to call this part UI for now. And we're going to set this to the UI string. Next variable, surface GUI name. This is the name of the surface GUI, so in my case, it is surface GUI. If you have different names for these objects, then of course you're going to set them to what they are inside here. And the last one is the text label name, which is just going to be text label. Now we have a prefix variable and a suffix variable. So the prefix variable is what goes before the like minutes and seconds part so like you need to play four that is the prefix and the suffix will be before you before being allowed in then we'll have our seconds variable so this is how much you want to wait I'm just gonna set it to 20 seconds for now so I can show you what it does so that's it for all the variables that's it alright so down here with there is the logic so first I'm going to make a function and this will be called format time and this will basically take the seconds and return a string that prettifies it and says like some number of minutes and some number of seconds. So the code I have for this is first two variables minutes to calculate the minutes from the seconds you just do math.floor seconds divided by 60 so seconds divided by 60 gets the number of minutes and math.floor just rounds that down. And then we'll also have our seconds, which are going to be the seconds, the top level seconds. This is a local variable, um, so don't get that confused. This local variable is only accessible in the function right now. So we're going to take the top level seconds, just subtract that by the minutes times 60, wrap that in parentheses for better readability. So what this will do is it'll uh, get the uh, number of seconds that of the rounded minutes and we're going to subtract the total seconds from that. So 
with the minutes, like how many seconds are still left that we haven't accounted for. So that's basically it. Now we're going to return a string representation of this. So to string, return to string. This just converts the object to a string. So minutes, dot, dot, two dots signifies a concatenation operation. And we're going to put a string here. And we're just going to put inside minutes and another concatenation to string seconds dot dot seconds. So this will return the string, which is minutes, the minutes. And there's a string in the middle that says minutes and, and then I'll put in the seconds and then put in the seconds text at the end. So this is it for the function. Now we're going to make the timer actually do something. So uh, I'm going to make a while loop that checks if the seconds is greater than or equal to zero. So while seconds is greater than or equal to zero, do. And at the end, of course, you're going to wait one second and we're going to minus equals one to the second. So every single time this loop runs, it'll decrease the second by one after it waits one second. So above this, this is where I'm going to update the uh, text label. So we're going to get the current formatted time and we're going to call our function that we defined prior and we're going to call seconds on it. So we're going to pass in seconds and we're going to get a pretty string representation of the seconds left. And now I'm going to cycle through my doors and change the text on them. So for underscore i in pairs, I should probably call this i door in pairs, doors do. So we don't need this underscore variable, that's the key. All I want is the object. So we want the door. Now I'm going to set the um, doors UI part. And in that UI part, we have our surface GUI name and our text label name dot text is equal to formatted time. Now, uh, this might look confusing, but this is basically just door. We're getting the UI part inside the door. And because you set this UI part variable to a string, which has UI in it, it'll try to get the UI object inside door. So if you look at my explorer, right, we are going to get the door and you see there's a UI object and it's going to select that object and keep going, keep going until we get this text label. Then we're going to change the text labels text uh, property to the formatted time. And uh, in addition to the formatted time, you need your prefix and your suffix. So we're going to concatenate the prefix at the beginning and the suffix at the end. Now, after your timer runs out, the while loop will just stop and it'll carry on to the rest of the code. And at the bottom, I'm just going to make a for loop that just gets rid of the can collide of each door so you can walk through it. So for underscore comma door in pairs, doors do, and you can set the door dot can collide equal to false. This means that you can walk straight through it. And in addition, you can do anything you want here. So if you want to make the color different or you want to set the transparency to something different, like I'm just going to do door to transparency is 0 0.5. So this is pretty much all you need for the door to work. Okay, I realized my problem. Make sure your UI part has its can collide set to false so that you don't bump into it. And uh, that's pretty much it for the code. I also added a space here because I didn't have a space. So let me demonstrate the working door. And uh, of course, uh, the code is in the description. Um, if you want to request more tutorials, uh, you can go to my website or you can just uh, make a comment. So let's see, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And boom, you can now walk through it. So yeah, that's it. this is it for the tutorial. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.